Hey church, Kelly here. I hope you're doing well. Our daily hope today is Joshua 22. And so we have just seen how God fulfilled all of his promises to the Israelites. Each tribe has received their allotted land. They have received their inheritance. They received the promised land. It's amazing news. And now we're in the fourth and final act of Joshua, which is chapter 22 to 24. And in these chapters, we see it's now Israel's turn to respond to all that God has done. And Joshua gives his final charge to the Israelites saying, be one nation under God and serving the Lord exclusively. Have no other gods. And before we enter in and dive in deeper to Joshua 22, I want to ask a few questions. Have you ever wrongly accused somebody of something? Have you assumed the worst about them? Have you ever felt that your individual sin does not affect anyone else? Or maybe you're on the flip side. Have you ever felt that and known that one person's sin can greatly affect the community? Well, these are a few of the things and questions that pop up as we read Joshua 22. So I'd encourage you to go read it on your own. It is a roller coaster of a ride and 100% worth it. And we get to learn a lot from it. But those are a few questions that I want you to be thinking about as we talk about Joshua 22. So we see the eastern tribes of Israel wanting to go back to their land on the eastern side of the Jordan. So if you remember in Numbers 32 that the Gadites, Reubenites, and half-tribe of Manasseh wanted to stay on the eastern side of Jordan and that be their inherited land. They made an agreement with Moses basically saying that they would go fight with the rest of the Israelites until they have received their promised land, their inheritance on the west side of the Jordan, and then they can go back to their land. And so that so these eastern tribes fulfilled that promise to Moses, to Joshua, and to God. They've been obedient 100% through. And so now they are going back to their land on the eastern side. And as they go back, they set up an altar of imposing size, emphasizing the size of it that could be seen by everyone around. And they set it up with good intentions and also with foresight, knowing what potentially could happen in the future. And they set it up as a witness between the rest of the Israelites saying that we are still a part of God. We are still a part of God's nation. We are still a part of Israelites. We are still obeying God. And this is a witness between us and the rest of the Israelites saying that even though a river divides us, we are still one nation under God. And Yet the other Israelites, they saw this imposing size altar and wanted to rage war against the rest, these Eastern tribes. And so Phinesis, who is known for his zeal of purity of Israel's worship and the 10 other tribes, they 10 leaders of the other tribes, they go and confront the Eastern tribes. They actually go and wrongly accuse them of being disobedient. And the Eastern tribes are saying, if we have done something wrong, like then, then so be it. But this was our heart. This was our intention that we wanted to set up this altar as a witness between us participating in God's promises. And we also can see on the other side of the 10 tribes that they have seen one person's sin greatly affect the community. They have, they mentioned Peor and Aiken that you, we've all read about, that one person's sin has greatly affected the community. So these 10 tribes were trying to confront the sin or the so thought sin that could affect the whole community. And because they had a zeal for God, because they wanted to be obedient, because they knew what one person or one tribe's sin could do for the rest of Israel. And so we see that both of them had good hearts in wanting to be obedient to God, wanting to partake in God's promises. But how they went about it probably wasn't the best. And so we see that we see that the Israelites realized that one person's sin can greatly influence and affect the whole community. And more than one person can die for someone else's iniquity. And we also see that 
that um, the Eastern tribes wanted to protect the future generations and not be taken out of God's promises. And actually setting up that altar uh, foreshadows that we get to partake in God's promises through Christ, which is sealed by the Holy Spirit. And you can see that in Ephesians 1 and in 2 Corinthians. And this foreshadows and personifies what we get to partake in now. And so I just want to encourage us, like, let's be a people that are united, not divided for anything, because we are united through Christ. We are a body of Christ that we get to be people that are united no matter what. And we get to serve God exclusively and that we get to meet people with curiosity rather than assuming the worst, that we get to believe the best in people rather than wrongly accuse them. So may we meet people with curiosity. May we believe the best in them. May we be one nation serving the Lord alone. And may you be encouraged today that you get to partake in God's promises because of what Christ has done on the cross. I encourage you to go read Joshua 22 on your own because it is so awesome. And I'm sure you can learn a lot more from it. But hope you're doing well, church. Much love.